We all know the famous tagline, WrestleMania is the granddaddy of them all. And part of what has made this event one of the most anticipated sports shows around the world are the entertaining musical performances that have become true WrestleMania moments. That being said, I'm Kevin Callis from Wrestling Behind the Themes, and here are our top 10 most memorable themes performed live at WrestleMania. While I was really hoping to include Ice-T rapping The Godfather in D'Lo Brown's entrance from WrestleMania 2000 on this list, there really wasn't a whole lot to talk about since all T said was Pimpin' 8, Pimpin' 8, Easy Man, Pimpin' 8, Pimpin' 8, Easy Man, Pimpin' 8, Pimpin' 8, Easy Man, Pimpin' 8, Pimpin' 8, Easy Man. So instead, you're stuck with everyone's favorite wrestler, Miss Personality herself, Rowdy Ronda Rousey. Making history as part of the first all-woman main event, the baddest woman on the planet rocketed down the ramp at the 35th installment of WrestleMania, while Joan Jett and the Blackhearts blasted away at their rock anthem Bad Reputation. Utilizing a Ramones-inspired template, the title track from the Blackhearts' 1981 album is a raucous ride of supercharged rock and roll. One of the few bands in wrestling history to have written songs used as themes for pay-per-views, television shows, and a wrestler's entrance music, or what you might call the WWE musical trifecta, Saliva is quite possibly the greatest WWE band ever. No disrespect, of course, to other acts like 3MB. At WrestleMania 18, the Dudley Boys were played to the ring live by the new metal sounds of Turn the Tables. This performance is memorable enough because of seeing Stacy Keebler gyrate on stage with the band while her 41 and a half inch legs shimmered in the spotlight. After an absolutely cringe version of America the Beautiful to kick off the WrestleMania 14 broadcast, the Chris Warren Band, featuring Jim Johnson on lead guitar, were practically booed out of Beantown as the Bostonians in attendance did not take kindly to an alternate version of one of America's most famous patriotic songs. What the I mean, it takes a lot of intestinal fortitude to perform an anthem that way, especially in the place where a lot of key events from the American Revolution took place. But I'm sure Vince thought it was good shit because after all, it was the Attitude Era. But thankfully, by the end of the night, the band was able to redeem themselves with a kick-ass version of the DX theme playing HBK out to the ring for his main event match against Stone Cold Steve Austin. Rey Mysterio Jr.'s road to the WrestleMania 22 main event was fueled by the death of his very close friend, Eddie Guerrero. Rey dedicated his journey to the late great Latino heat and made a promise to win his first world title in tribute to his fallen friend. This journey was made even more special thanks to the band P.O.D.'s emotional performance that night of Mysterio's entrance theme, Booyaka 619. Playing up on an elevated stage where Rey Rey himself would briefly join the group, I guess after running up a couple flights of stairs? Or maybe his his elaborate Mexican-themed bird-like headdress had magical powers? I don't know. All I really know is that P.O.D. delivered an energetic shot of adrenaline that significantly boosted the vibe of everyone in that arena. Despite all his efforts, CM Punk was never going to be a sports entertainer main eventing the show of shows. Punk is a pro wrestler, and a pretty damn good one, but even he knew, as his tumultuous WWE tenure was beginning to wind down, that his goal of being in the WrestleMania main event was never going to happen. Bruh. However, one might argue that Punk's defining Mania moment might have come at WrestleMania 29, when he was tasked with delivering a strong performance opposite the rapidly aging Undertaker, and that all started with a surprise performance of Cult of Personality, as the Second City Saint defiantly marched to the ring inside New Jersey's MetLife Stadium. New York York City's own Living Color tore the house down right in their own backyard and gave Punk just a little something to smile about for the time being. Now that Trips has called it a career, we can all agree that rarely has there been such a perfect marriage between a musical group and a wrestler than Motorhead and Triple H. And you can learn more about this by checking out one of our other videos right here. 
Now, don't get me wrong. Having Motorhead play Hunter to the Ring is the definition of bad ass. But when Lemmy started to sing at WrestleMania 17 and 21, that's where the motor began to slightly sputter, sounding a lot like gibberish in several parts, as if he forgot the lyrics literally just seconds before going on stage. However, it's still a very memorable entrance, and to be fair, any other lead singer butchering the lyrics would have been an absolute disaster. But Lemmy and Motorhead are cool enough to make this performance sound absolutely epic, gibberish and all. Regardless of how one feels about Limp Bizkit's music, it's hard to deny how much the band added to The Undertaker's entrance at WrestleMania 19. I mean, who didn't do it all for the Nookie back in the early 2000s, when the Bizkit were one of the biggest rock acts in the United States? Fred Durst and his boys barged into the birthplace of grunge to perform their hit Rollin' and hype up the Seattle crowd for what was going to be a rather rough two-on-one handicap match pitting A-Train and the Big Show versus the American Badass, with Pyro being shot out the wazoo Dirty Dancer shimmering on stage, and the controversial Freddy Fred winding up doing his thing inside the squared circle, it's safe to say that they accomplished their mission. Easily the most unique musical mania performance, Mark Crozer and the Rells went all out at WrestleMania 30 as they crooned Bray Wyatt to the ring with a swampy New Orleans flavor that felt right at home on the bayou. Hey, wait a second, is that Marty Skrull on guitar? Now Bray's eerie entrance had already become a sight to see on the regular thanks to his fireflies, but seeing and hearing Live in Fear performed live was lit AF. In what should have been a star-making moment for Wyatt and his family, unfortunately Bray and his buddies began a streak of being buried in four straight WrestleManias. Things were never the same after that night in the Big Easy, and while we're all still in awe of the atmosphere that this performance created, there is no way to sugarcoat just how badly the WWE failed Wyndham Rotunda. Sasha Banks' The Sky the Limit theme could seriously have been a summertime smash in the early 2010s. I mean, most pro wrestling theme songs that have garnered any sort of mainstream attention in the past have been tied to something that goes viral, like fandangoing. But Banks' theme is one of the few WWE tracks that you could legitimately see getting massive top 40 radio play on its own merits. There's no question about the legit boss having become larger than life and demanding an equally sized entrance, especially on on the biggest stage in wrestling. So being able to have your cousin, whose famous hip hop icon Snoop Doggy Dog, rap you and your theme to the ring at the biggest WrestleMania ever? Well, that is so fresh, y'all. Yes, yes, y'all. Nita Strauss is a sick shredder, and the heavy metal rock goddess absolutely slayed this performance of Shinsuke Nakamura's theme at WrestleMania 34. Considering the fact that the rising sun elicits such an electric atmosphere upon every arena when it begins to play, this ranking should come as no surprise to those in the know. And for as much hyped Mania match versus AJ Styles, the artist appeared on the grand stage for the first time, surrounded by a cadre of violinists. But the woman leading the strings with her guitar that night definitely stole the show. With only a spotlight at first, Nita proceeded to melt all 78,000 faces off with a ripping solo before playing the opening riff to seal the deal on what is considered one of the most iconic WrestleMania entrances of all time. So what do you think? Do you agree or disagree with our list? Are there any themes that you would add? Leave a comment down below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time right here on Wrestling Behind the Themes.